Hey there friends, I'm Foxy, and today, well, I did it. I turned the Pyromancer into an unkillable tank. The build functions pretty similar to the Technomancer variant that I made, and also had similar levels of success and just kind of steamrolling through uh, the CT tiers. It, all in all, it took about four hours, I think, to go from CT6 to CT15, and we did all of that on stream, so if you'd like to go watch like to go back and watch the progression of it you're more than welcome to and i'll link my twitch in the description below um it's pretty much the same as the technomancer variant if you're looking to just breeze your way through the ct levels with minimal effort and headache um i highly 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 recommend what i'm referring to as the anchromancer pyro tanker flame tank we might have to work on the name a little bit enjoy friends Similar to the Tank Nomancer, the Tank Romancer build revolves around two things, being outright unkillable through insane healing and putting out large AoE damage. We're going to accomplish this by foregoing most of our damage traits for defense instead, while relying on the weapon mod Scrap Grenade. For our healing, we'll be consistently throwing out heat waves to apply burning to enemies for a consistent, heavy source of healing. Similar to my Technomancer build, just build defensive and have no fear as you walk straight into enemies and easily up to CT15. On that note, let's take a look at what you'll need to get started. Okay, let's talk about our weapon. It's same, exact same. If you watched my Technomancer video, then you can probably skip this part. Um, for those of you that didn't watch the Technomancer variant of this build, um, I'll go through and explain this anyway. Our main source of damage is the tier 3 mod Scrap Grenade. You can get this off of a legendary called the Juggler. Um, Tiago sells it, so what you need to do is you need to go buy that legendary off of Tiago, scrap it, and we're just going to take that power and we're going to put it on either a one-shot variant uh, sniper rifle, or we can also put it on a shotgun. A shotgun's a little bit more tedious because you're reloading after every shot. And it got so tedious when I tried it that I had to rebind my reload to something that was easier to press um, while I was just playing. So my recommendation, one shot variant rifle. Um, for the second mod on this, if you can find one with clip combustion, that's great. It's just, it's free AOE damage um, while we're doing what we're doing anyway. Um, it's not all that important. You will still have enough damage even without clip combustion. Um, you can forego it for another damage trait if that's all you're finding, or even shield maiden. Like that, that's not a bad one either, um, just for the free extra shield. Um, but beyond that, this is. This is it. This is what we're going to use. If you, once you have your scrap grenade, one shot rifle, you're good to go on, on the, on the weapon front. Okay. Let's talk skills. Um, I think my camera's probably covering this one right here, but this, we have overheat and then feed the flames and heat wave overheat. This is at least I used it as more of a panic button than anything because it can hit so many targets. If I was super low health, I hit overheat, I'm back to full health with the amount of skill leech and other mods and stuff that we're running. Um, so panic button, you can use it for damage um, if you like. It's just a matter of if you think you're going to need that panic button um, in a bit. Feed the flames is it. Decent bit of damage, also good healing. Um, if we're, if you only have a boss or like one enemy in front of you and you can't use overheat and hit a bunch of mobs, feed the flames is another nice heal for you. Um, just a little bit extra. Heat wave. This is the important part. This is where all of our healing is going to come from. So 6.2 second cooldown for it. And we'll also be using an armor mod, we'll get into that later, that gives us two charges of this before it incurs a cooldown. So, heat wave this way, heat wave that way, everything is burning now, you are healing for an insane amount. Um, and then, again, sh super short cooldown. So you can just be spamming it when it's up, um, keep burning on everything, that's bringing in all of your healing. Okay. Skill tree. As you can see, we went the middle tree again. There's a lot of 
very good defensive options uh, in this tree, as well as some cooldown reduction and increased damage to targets that are burning. Um, as you can see, we we get a lot of max health here. Um, all of these nodes here. Um, that's longer burn. There's more damage. Here we go. Yeah, enemies afflicted by burn receive 15% more damage. Ideally, that should be anything that we're hitting should be burning because our heat wave is going to be on such a short cooldown from the cooldown reduction that we're getting here and here. Um, that also, anomalous lava, a very important trait to have here. Um, ignite, we're going to be spamming heat wave. Heat wave is an ignite skill. Every time we use that, our armor is increased by 45% for 10 seconds. So that's, we can maintain that the entire time and just be a super tank while just healing through everything. So I'll leave this on the screen for a bit. You guys can pause. This, this is it. These are all of our defensive options. This is what we need to be unkillable. Okay, armor mods. We are going to need a solid balance of defensive and offensive here. Um, important defensive ones. Um, where is our golem? Emergency stance. All of these are... You don't absolutely need all of them. It, this is just to help out and assist in your tankiness. So if you don't have some of these, don't freak out. Um, ideally, you'll get some of them along the way as you're climbing tiers. So emergency stance, extremely solid defensive option. Um, rejuvenation is also another good one. That one is going to give us a proc of yeah, 14,000 firepower, 7,000 anomaly power. The armor bonus is extremely nice tank wise um whenever our health is replenished this is going to proc health is always being replenished because we rely on a bunch of healing so this is going to have a very nice uptime damage absorber is another uh good generic one um just increased armor and resistance um this even odds one i didn't run this on my technomancer because i don't think i had it um I came across it early on, on uh, leveling up this pyro through the CT levels, and it, it's nice. Um, it's 30% health, damn near all the time, because we are always in melee and in that close range with uh, all the enemies that we're fighting. So these are some of your solid defensive options. Pick and choose what you got. Um, offensive, this is where things get fun. Is we don't need many but the ones that we're gonna use are are pretty fun uh so where is our ride okay ride the wave heat wave skill can be activated one more time before triggering the cooldown so this gives us two charges of heat wave that's great i had considered there's another armor mod uh it's it goes by a different name i'll flash it on the screen here for you guys I thought about running both of these so that I could have three charges um, of Heat Wave. Could be something fun uh, for you guys to play around with if you so choose. I haven't messed with it quite yet. Um, I, I found that the two charges was plenty, um, or really all that I needed to get everything around me burning and get a stable bit of healing. Um, burnt Out is another good one for damage here. so. It's a heat wave mod. You're going to see a trend here. We're spamming heat waves. Everything around us is going to be getting hit by heat wave constantly. Damaged enemies take 25% more damage for 8 seconds. We can keep that up all the time. We're always hitting heat wave. Everything's getting hit by heat wave. It's a flat damage increase, which is going to make our scrap grenade mod from our weapon, our main source of damage here, do more damage. It's all about buffing that damage scrap grenade the third one i have listed here i didn't have this until i went and did eye of the storm um so i got all the way up to ct15 was clearing ct15s without this mod but this is really if you have this one it's nice obviously uh bullet kindling deal 20 percent more damage against enemies afflicted by burn everything's going to be afflicted by burn. So again, another flat damage modifier for our main source of damage. These are what we want. Um, 
again the i would say the most important one here is going to be the ride the wave here um just the additional charge of heat wave because it provides an offensive benefit but the defensive benefit that it provides is rather strong as well because if you have a huge horde of enemies on your left and one on your right you can't hit them all with one uh heat wave extra charge you can hit that side and that side you have everything burning you have a bunch of healing it's honestly it might be more defensive than offensive but it's i don't know i i contemplated putting this with the defensive ones but still very very strong that might be one of your your musts um uh, if you will Everything else can be, like I said, if you have it, put it on. Um, also, don't mind uh, my gear here. This is not what I used all the way to progress the CT levels. You can go back, you can watch on Twitch. It was primarily blues and like a handful of purples and stuff like that. So I'm aware that you're not going to be able to fit all of these mods um, on your gear at the same time. Unless you luck out, you get some favorable drops. Um, but... Hopefully this gives you a little idea of what to aim for armor mod wise and a, a little bit of a tier list on like what you want to prioritize as you're progressing through the CT levels. Okay, stat priority. This is going to be pretty well the exact same as the Technomancer variant of this. We want max health, we want skill leech. That skill leech is extremely important. Um, as I said, that's going to be all of our healing. Uh, cooldown reduction is also very solid, as well as uh, status power. So status power is just going to make the burning do more damage. The skill life leech is, again, providing his healing from um, everything burning and our heat waves that we're throwing out. Cooldown reduction so that we can get even shorter cooldown on heat wave as well as our other abilities. Um, max health, just... It's cushion. We're a tank. We're building tanky. Um, we want to be able to live. So we don't overly care about offensive stats here, especially while we're just progressing through the CT levels. Um, you can see close range damage. Like if if you come across a piece like this and it has close range damage on it, that, that's solid. It's extra damage. It's free damage. You're going to be in melee shooting things with the sniper. It counts as close range damage. So. It's a nice buff, but it's not like, oh my god, I need to go find pieces that have close range damage on it. Alright guys, hopefully this build helps get you guys rolling. I do have some early tips to kind of get you started. Um, number one, hold overheat for panic situations. The healing it provides is super clutch if you don't have a lot of targets burning and everything's kind of spread out while you're trying to close the gap between you and the enemies. Number two, make sure you're using heat wave consistently. This is our main source of healing, but even if we're not in danger, the damage boost it provides us is invaluable. Number three, always be aware of where the restocks are in your expedition. We tend to run out of ammo with our sniper a lot. No ammo means no scrap grenade damage, which means we're doing no damage. You're going to severely hinder your time in expedition runs if you're aimlessly running around trying to find ammo. Number four, as with the Technomancer variant of this, we're not very fast when it comes to expedition clears. If you reach CT14 and you have to achieve gold to progress to CT15, I highly, highly recommend searching out a Chem Lab or an Arcways of Enoch. These are both pretty easy to achieve gold on, with Arcways being the easier of the two. As with Arcways, you'll no doubt achieve gold rank on it simply by finishing the expedition. I had a lot of fun creating and refining this build for you guys, so I do hope you enjoy it and are able to find the same level of success, especially if you're stuck at a certain CT level. For reference, I was able to very smoothly progress my CT ranks with this build, and then after a bit of farming, I was able to solo Eye of the Storm and achieve bronze. I will be refining the build a bit more for proper endgame and speed at some point in the future, but for completing and progressing CT levels, the build in its current iteration is great. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or even suggestions as I'm new to this, please let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to watch me progress these builds and refine them live, be sure to check me out on Twitch. Link to that and my Discord in the description below. I'm currently leveling in Devastator next to see if we can make a variant of these builds that works equally well, so stay tuned for that, or come watch me work on it live.
that's all for me though friends good luck with climbing your challenge tiers and i'll see you in the next one